Thank you guys so much for joining us on the Real Estate Investor Show. Hard money for real estate investors. We are Carolina Capital Management. We are lenders for real estate investors in the Southeast. If you're interested in borrowing money, go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the apply now tab. If you're a passive investor looking for passive returns, click on the accredited investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell. And most importantly, Wednesdays with Wendy. <laughs> or not. <laughs>just so you know, we're having a little slow internet problem. So sometimes the graphics are uh, trailing behind us. Yes. So anyway, Wendy just like our donates 30, <laughs> 30 minutes of her time per person on Wednesdays to talk about anything real estate, get on her calendar. There's a link. It's also in the chat box on the right hand side or underneath your screen, depending on the platform you're viewing mm -hmm. us from. She's usually booked out a couple of months in yeah, advance. Going into May at this point. Yeah. I made it through this. You one. did. I'm you, proud. You did great. Almost sounded like a professional. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, if we have, uh, if you have any questions or comments, then uh, put them over there in that little chat box and we'll do our best. If they're good, we'll read them answer and answer them. them. <laughs> uh, you know what they say about there's no stupid questions. Just stupid people. That's right. <laughs> <right. laughs> no, there actually are stupid questions. Yeah. Those we're not answering. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> We should probably bring up the um, invasion of Russia into the Ukraine today. That was uh, just really tough news to wake up to this morning. For me, we have so many friends that are from that area and, right. and in that area, we just need to be praying for them. Yep. Absolutely. Yes. And selfishly, uh, oil is up to a hundred dollars a barrel. Yeah. It's crazy. The Russian stock market crashed. I think it said, they said it's the lowest it's been in 40 years. Um, people well, making a run on the bank too, trying to transfer their currency to us dollars and euros. And, um, it's just been really, well, well sad. yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, might discuss that uh, as well. Maybe yeah. Not. Yeah. Well, we need to see, you know, how, how that's going to affect us. Cause it will. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, let's bring our right. friends on. Yes. Uh, without further ado, we're, doing, we're, we're doing. Uh, bringing some friends from Freedom Founders onto the show. So Part of our tribe. Glenn Strongberg, Cheryl McKenna and Fuquan Bio, please come out of that green room. <laughs> there they are. Look at those pretty faces. Yay. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, so listen, I'm going to go around the horn kind of, what was the name of that family? The Brady Bunch? Yeah, that's right. Brady Bunch style. A story. Um, I, I actually, uh, I, I thought this was a really good and timely mastermind and it had to do with being the, the theme was anti-fragile and anti, anti-fragility. Anti and we are, you know, running, <laughs> running through some unknowns here with the economy yeah. and the best way to keep your business going is to make sure that you're not, uh, one minor change won't get you into trouble. Yeah. That you're, so that you're building on solid friend. ground. Yeah. Uh, so Glenn, uh, to that, um, what, uh, what did, what did you get uh, the most out of what, what was the one thing that popped out in your head? And talk a little bit about what you do, what, what you do, Glenn. Yeah, what, what I do is I, I buy manufactured homes on, on usually a half an acre to an acre track of land. Um, we, 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 have a, we have a lending model, a turnkey model. We buy the home, we fix it up like new. We, and we, like I say, we keep about a third for ourselves, turnkey, two thirds to our lenders. We, I think we have our, 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 our investors. Uh, we have like, uh, I think 550 properties under management right now. And so- Wow. So yeah, we we're we're in, we're in uh, Texas, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and we're just we're just doing getting ready to go into Florida too. So that's that's what that's what we do. That's what I do. Awesome. So what was your big takeaway? Do you know I, I I thought it was timely. I thought it was a very timely meeting and you know there was a you know a lot a lot of talk about 2008. We had panels on that and and 
you know, it, it, it was really good. And then plus, um, you know, the gentleman, I'm drawing a blank on his name right now, from Zimbabwe, right? He experienced a currency crash in Zimbabwe. And, you know, you, you hear about that one day that you, you know, you're worth, his parents were very wealthy businessmen, you know, all of a sudden the currency crash happens and they're worth nothing. So, Alistair yeah. McDonald, him? Yeah, Alistair, Alistair, yes. Yeah. Alistair, mm -hmm. was that his name? But uh, yeah, for me, it was really good because it, uh, once again, unbelievable timely. You know, I woke up this morning, saw the same thing, you know, with Russia invading Ukraine. Our stock market, I don't know what it is right now, but it was down seven, 800 points when it opened. I saw that. But, uh, you know, the market has been, you know, been hit hard. And, and you know, I, I've been saying, <laughs> I've actually been, I've been wrong for the last three years. I always confess that. <laughs> I, 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 thought, I, thought the rec I thought we were going to, because this is like the longest bull run I've ever seen. But mm -hmm. to me, you can almost <clears throat> tell, you can, you can, I mean, there's just black swans everywhere right now, right? I mean, just inflation's running out of control. The, 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 the war here, there's, there's, there's all kinds of stuff going on. So, you know, I, I think people really do got to think, they've got to think, at least, well, well, not everyone does, but I am thinking defensively now. I'm thinking defensively and I'm really thinking what are the what ifs and, and how do I how do I protect myself personally and, and my business during during these what I believe are going to be very, very rough times coming up. So, right. Right. I agree. How about you, Cheryl? So, Cheryl, here's what I do. If you are a business owner and you accept credit cards as a form of payment, from your customers, patients, whatever, there's a 60% chance that you are overpaying. Mm -hmm. uh, most businesses though, they don't want to change merchant service providers. Right. So we help save money on that expense without changing providers. So business owners, if you're accepting credit cards and you get that statement in the mail or online and you look at it and you're like, I have no idea what this means. We know what all those acronyms mean. And most of the time we can find savings for the business owner. So it's straight to the bottom line profit. And I also loved the, the meeting that we were all at last weekend. Um, I have pages and pages of notes. What, one of the first things that I wrote down was all progress begins with truth. Mm. And I, I thought that was good. You cannot become anti-fragile unless you take a truthful look um, at whatever you're trying to become anti-fragile in, right? And it could be personal as well as business. Right. So it, it's really about, you got to take that honest look and see what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, and what do you need to do to become anti-fragile? And mm. the answer for that is so unique to all of us, right? Because right. even though like a lot of you are in sort of the same industry, but all of your organizations are completely different. So mm -hmm. anti-fragile could be um, how do you increase profit in a, in a business, right? Or um, personally for me, I just try and be anti-fragile by surrounding myself with thinkers and um, good people, just really good people like you mm -hmm. guys all are. I appreciate your integrity and also your honesty that you've given me. You've all helped me progress because you've been very truthful with me. It's like, Cheryl, you're at this spot. Here's where you got to go next. So mm -hmm. that was one of my yeah. big takeaways. We we feel the same way. You know, it's, it's funny too. You talked about how be, being anti-fragile, how are you going to increase your profit? I mean, that's what everybody wants, right? But mm -hmm. is it by doing more or is it by cutting back, um, slimming down your operation, figuring where the leaks are and plugging those holes, building stronger processes and systems? And, you know, is, is it or is it a combination of the two? You know, it's mm -hmm. and, and like you said, it's different for everybody. I, I love that answer. Mm -hmm. That's that's awesome. Fuquan. Yeah. Talk to us. <laughs> yeah, it was a great event as always. Oh, so Fuquan Bilal, Energy Capital Fund. My main responsibility is increasing revenue. That's what it is. That's what I was told. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so I was like, and by the way, Cheryl, I love the bookcase background. I'm actually on a due diligence trip in Atlanta. 
one of the guys sell multifamily, so I have the hotel back room, back background right now. But anyway, <laughs> thanks for having me on the show, guys. Really appreciate it. Yeah, so the theme anti fragile really it was great for me. I got the chance to share my life experiences that have made me actually miss the anti fragile, I believe. So, you know, from all those trials and tribulations we go through, we just add on a layer of tough skin and learn how to do things. So I'm grateful for 9-11 in 2008 because it made all of us, you know, who we are today going through that um, and building and even COVID really, it really made us think different, underwrite deals different, and it set us up for whatever it is to come, right? We already have a mindset that something is coming. We're building these relationships. And that was one of the biggest things I got from the event also, you know, really um, having those relationships um, and developing those true relationships where you can count on a support team to kind of either feed you information or feed you strategies. And like, as Cheryl mentioned, just being honest with you and telling you things that you need to correct or change to kind of you know move forward in whatever endeavor you're in. So I always like going to those events because it's like a spark in the energy you get from the, those events. And I always try to connect with at least two or three people to make the relationship deeper. Um, mm. You know, Bill was laughing at me. He was like, for quite a little names of their cats and dogs. So I mean, <laughs> I, I, I go because the conversation is not just about um, financial friends and what we can do for each other financially. It's really how we can add value um, based on uh, the relationship. You know, what can I do to serve constantly having that mindset? Um, and I know all of us are, you know, go givers and that just filling your circle and creating those relationships with those types of people are great. The other, the other good point that I got from that was really making sure that, you know, everyone is having an issue with staff, shortage of staff and everything else. Mm -hmm. And some of the strategies that was shared was you may need to hire up if mm -hmm. you don't have enough coverage just to make sure you have coverage because it may cost you a little bit more, but at least services provided um, and in the long run, you'll benefit. So that was a big takeaway for me because we're all trying to cut down and, you know, with COVID and everything in place now, people are calling out constantly. So you want to make sure that you, you have the staff there to continue to be able to provide that same service. Even if it means taking a little bit of loss, you still have the good image of providing service to your customers. So, right. Yeah. I want to go back to where you talked about the cats and the dogs. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's really, I mean, we were all blown away listening to how well you build relationships with your customers and your clients that you are so in tune to them and what's going on in their world that you know the names of their cats and dogs. And I'm thinking, wow, that's that's really in depth. And it's and it's not fake, you know, hey, what's your dog's name? Let me write it down. It's it's a real caring relationship. And and I think you know, with with society the way it is and business to where it's all become online, such as this. Um, and, and everything's virtual, we've lost the ability to truly care about others and have a relationship, a real relationship, friendship with other people. Um, and that's a great way to hedge against anti-fragility is to really have those relationships. Yeah, that's a good point. It was actually something that Cheryl and I have been discussing a while ago because we both have teenager sons and we kind of share parenting strategies. And I was like, hey, you you, you might want to try the active listening thing because if you actually can sit there, give them the opportunity to express themselves, not cut them off, and really truly show that you are listening to what they're saying, that, that works. I started to use that in my business and I saw a major turnaround. Instead of me just saying, getting on a call, giving them, you know, telling them what I wanted to tell them, I started to reverse it, let them do all the talking. And sometimes I don't even talk about investments. You know, you know, they've made a comment is like, you know, I, they asked me about returns and investments and I'm talking about something completely different. And it's mm -hmm. almost like they have to be like, just get to the point. Just how much are the returns? You know, because that's not what I'm trying to go into the attention of meeting this person to raise capital. I'm really trying to establish a lifelong relationship because I believe that has more value than, you know, a return. The real ROI is the relationship that you can create and how you guys can have a mutual benefit from that. So. Um, that's what I try to do. And just being an active listener helps, you know, mm -hmm. and those things that point out to them when you're communicating with them, if they are talking about a dog or a cat or a fish or whatever, you know, I make note of that. And I kind of review the call again and make notes of things that were important to them that I sort of stood out on that conversation and then just bring it up next time uh, when I speak to them. And 
I learned that a very long time ago. There was a gentleman that um, he's retired now. When I first met him, I was talking about my kids and he had asked me their names and I had saw him two years later and we were actually at an event and he remembered the names of my two kids and the ages. And that was quite wow. impressive to me. I was like, wow, two years later, I met him one time and he saw me again and he remembered that. Yeah, wow, that's powerful. And I know I remember how that made me feel. So right. trying to do that is really important. Well, yeah, you're 100 percent right. You know, in a world that is so noisy, so distracting, when someone remembers you, it speaks volumes mm -hmm. because, I mean, I know how many distractions I get and how much noise I hear. But when someone like you said, remember something that far, you know, two years down the road, I mean, like, like, man, he, that person put, showed interest in me. I'm, yeah. I'm interesting to them. Yeah. I want, I well, want more a, of that. I, I, yeah. I want to be around <laughs> yeah. that person. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's great. I think uh, Glenn had his. Yeah, to say I was something. gonna say two things. My my first thought when you said about dogs and cats, I'm thinking, man, I'm so ADHD. I don't remember what I had for breakfast. I don't have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 I, I admire you for that. But no, on a serious note, you know, the beauty of these mastermind groups, right? And everybody on this call, we're all great friends, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I, I, I had the good fortune of being part of Freedom Founders from day one the first meeting 11 years ago right and and i i kind of saw david's vision of you know have a bunch of dentists with money a bunch of real estate guys put them together they make money create win-wins i go that's going to work right so and it did it's where it's been great for all of us and and mm -hmm. for them and for, for all the for all the dentists and so forth but the real surprise for me is is the unbelievable friendships that i've made through the years i mean people that i travel with that you know do calls with that just you know like i say i can pick up the phone and you know and and, and ask you know if, if i need help i can get help from them they can pick up the phone get help from me and that's that was unexpected i didn't realize that that, that i'd have so many great friends from the group i just didn't realize that so you know and at the same time um uh, building those relationships with the the members um you you have to balance it with your time. I mean, mm -hmm. they're not your only customers as well. And get, getting that information and listening, it's smart that you record your phone calls, spook on, so you can go back and listen. Well, for compliance too. <laughs> That's yeah. the main reason, compliance. Yeah. Yeah. But you That's know, smart. You, you still have to use automation, but you have to pick and choose what kind of automation. There's nothing worse than getting an email that says, Hi, insert name here. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, they were paying a lot of attention when they sent that. Yeah. Like when they call you William, out. you know, it's not really for you. No, I, I, I get emails all the time from uh, Mr. Carolina Hard Money. Yeah. <laughs> you are Mr. Carolina Hard Money. I think you should just accept that title. Yeah. <laughs> just go with that. I'd run with it. Yeah. I'd run yeah. With it. yeah. <laughs> I'm so, going to get him a Superman t-shirt that says Mr. Carolina hard money on the front. Oh my gosh, please do. <laughs> please do that. Uh, yeah. Getting back to uh, your point, Cheryl, on the <laughs> trying to figure out what's uh, going to help you uh, grow your business, you know, taking that, those two pages and taking your obstacles on one side and then your opportunities on the other. Uh, one of the things that, uh, helped me or what stuck out with me was the fact that yes, you have to put those obstacles there and your opportunities, but don't focus so much on the obstacles. You have to understand the obstacles, but if you focus all your attention on the obstacles, the obstacles are always going to be in front of you. Um, and I kind of equate that to the professional golfer. You'll see them on these tournaments. They'll close their eyes before they make a shot. And what they're doing is they're visualizing, how that shot is going to take mm -hmm, place mm -hmm. and then the outcome. And if you're doing that yourself with the uh, paying too much attention your, uh, to the obstacles, your mind will keep those obstacles and uh, and focus more. So if you focus yeah. on the opportunities, uh, you're much, uh, much greater opportunity to make the opportunities as it were. Well, and that's, that's one of the things they talked about uh, at this event was really focusing on the positive and speaking the positive and, right. and, and really visualizing the positive outcome. Um, I try to do that daily. I know I've got people in my life, my husband, 
is one of those people that always looks for what's the worst thing that can happen instead of assuming it's going to be a great thing. So I'm always fighting that. Pray for me. <laughs> yeah, you know, go ahead, go ahead, Glenn. Well, I was going to say real quick, you know, and, and that is so true right there. And one of my, well, my, there's, there's probably other quotes in the Bible that I like better, but, but my, one of my favorite non-Bible quotes is Henry Ford's, Henry Ford's quote, right? Whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. I love that quote. There's, there's yeah. like, so much truth in that because it, it, it you're, you're right. Whichever way you think, it's just that simple. And I really believe yeah. that's, that's how it works. I believe God rewards people who think they can, right? That's faith, yeah. right? So. <laughs> That's yeah, right. well, just to add to that, I, I actually run across those challenges on a daily basis with my team, with people, you know, always not having that positive mindset. And I just cut them off and say, hey, what's the best thing that happened to you today so far? Mm -hmm. And that forces their brain to reverse and think about positive. And right. when I do that, they go, oh, here you go again. Then they know they have to jump on the positive. <laughs> I do that all day long. When there I you start go, hearing it, like, no, no, positivity no. and gratitude. Yep. Come yep. on, you got to safeguard your mind from you. Got to yeah. be, you have to, you know. So anything here is a first world problem. Yeah, that's, that's, totally so, true. that's so true. That's, another, another big takeaway was the presentation on boring investments. Yeah, and that was really really good because I, I believe now, especially since there's so much money coming from the stock market, chasing alternative investments. Um, those guys are jumping into a multifamily now, the big hedge funds in Wall Street. So um, I think people are chasing yield and they, mm -hmm. they don't understand that it's really based on a sponsor and the operation versus the deal. Right. So really sticking to uh, something that's simple, boring, as they say, that you understand, even if it's a lower yield, you know, it's good now, especially in this climate. So yeah. definitely, you know, if you're listening to this call, get to know the sponsor, the operator see what makes them tick because they're the one that's driving the vehicle that ultimately will give you that return so that's right that was we're, we're like the poster children for boring we've been well, yeah. <laughs> you know, what Juan just said that that is so good and someone at the meeting said this that back in 2008 like after the after the reset happened 80 to 90 percent of real estate investment investors went out of business Mm. That's a big number. So what it you is. said about the deal sponsor, that is huge. You know, people who have weathered the storm and that's part of what, you know, what David, how he bets, how he bets all of us and so forth. But that's so true. That's so true. That's got to be careful. Got to be careful. So, I, I have a saying that if you cannot explain the investment to your spouse, that's probably <laughs> not an investment you want to get into. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> or, or even understand it yourself. You're like, I don't know, but I gave them a hundred grand <laughs> <laughs> and the returns are going to be really good. Someday. <laughs> it says it right here. Yeah. Gonna, gonna be, man. I love that. Gonna be. <laughs> um, I right, have one that I, I really liked as far as anyone who's listening, that's a business owner. So we got to hear from Bert Copeland, um, yeah. who like, uh, CFO. He's always great. And he yeah, said, I, I like Bert a lot. He's yeah. A, he said, do this exercise. Um, if you own a business, um, look at your P and L you cannot change your revenue. What can you do to get more profitable? What has to change to increase profit? And I mm -hmm. thought that was a really, a really good exercise that we can all do as well as business owners. Yeah, he talked about turning your PL upside down. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. Start bottom and then go to the top. That was mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. an L and P. I, I like yeah. to add I like to add a team member name by every line on a PL to see the oh, that's good. increasing or low numbers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well that, yeah. that goes into what Bert has talked about, you know, knowing your um you know, your income per person, per person your EBITDA yep. per person, all of those things. And very important if, if you're running a business to know, you know, salaries broken out by who's bringing in what, where and when. And, you know, it's, and when you can do that, you're unstoppable. Yeah. Yeah. We're we, actually in the process of doing that we, now. We just hmm. finished doing our monthly financial meeting. And while there, this is only two months into the year, uh, yeah. we're looking at these numbers and we, we added four new people and we increased our um, payroll by 54%, 52, 52%, 52 but our revenues, gross revenues were increased by 165% in that same two month period. Um, well, there you go. That's a no brainer. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then the, the net was like 122%. Again, that's only two months. Um, you know, in our business, you have ebbs and flows. Well, I just want to correct. It was the, yeah, he's the numbers guy. We'll listen to Jonathan. <laughs> <Is that not correct? laughs> You're not correct. The, the gross was increased by 122% and the net was increased by 164%. Yeah. Okay. So, so the back. gross was up, but the net actually got supercharged. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where we'd well, like to measure from, but it yeah. was just, um, it, it's amazing to see what happens when you really get your arms around what you're doing every day. Mm -hmm. What, what are your numbers looking like every day and staying on top of that? I'm amazed for us at, at how, how long we survived without having our map exacted like it is now. And, and I'm sure you guys are, you know, doing the same thing, ha just really having things dialed in, uh, just granular to where you really, really need to understand where you're, where you are minute to minute. Yeah, you mentioned map. I, I learned a long time ago. You can't look for a city in Chicago with a map of Detroit. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So true. Well, you could, but you're not going to get anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I feel funny. like part of being anti-fragile is also the experience that as business owners that we and our teams create for our, cl our clients. Right. right. Our, our customers. And mm -hmm. I was uh, talking to Ben, my significant other last night, and he's doing business with someone. And I was just like, wow, they sent this paperwork. Nothing was filled out. We don't have an extension for someone. There was no onboarding process. And I said to him, this would never happen with me and my team to my clients. <laughs> like I, there's no way. Right. So we also, and, and, and going back to being positive and gratitude, like we want to create this positive environment that also helps make us anti-fragile because mm -hmm. it's comfortable for people to do business with someone where they know the roadmap as a customer, as a client of where they're going as well. So mm -hmm. there's just so much to properly setting expectations and having that roadmap, not only for yourself and your team, but for the people that you know, that are your clients and customers. So. Right. And remembering our mistakes and actually experiencing mistakes when people, um, you know, people who are in business that say, you know, they've never had foreclosures or, you know, they've, they've never done bad deals um, or they've never lost money in real estate. I, they scare me <laughs> because, yeah. Yeah. You, you know, they haven't run into a wall. They haven't had to, um, dig themselves out of wherever they were. And I, I think, uh, you know, Paul, Mo Paul Moore, who was one of the speakers had that podcast, how to lose money. What a great name for yeah. a podcast. Um, because really that's how we get better with every scar we get. Yes. Young man in the lower right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. I want I want to piggyback on what Cheryl said, because it's, it's a real key point here, right? You know, and so I, 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 whoever your client is, right, whoever your clients are, you know, in our case, it's our investors and it's our tenants. And I tell our team all the time, I said, we only got to worry about two metric, exceeding expectations for investors and exceeding expectations for tenants. If we do that, we don't got to worry about us. And my take is that if we really, really do focus on that, all that P&L stuff, boy, it just takes care of itself. It's amazing mm -hmm. how that happens, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, you, like I think some people get too caught up in the numbers and not the service side of it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the, you know, that's the critical part. You know, when you've got investors singing your praises to other investors and tenants doing the same thing for, in our case, then that's what, that's what puts our business on steroids. So that's right. Thanks, thanks Glenn. I just added two more KPIs to the sheet. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Listen guys, we're, um, Coming up on, actually, we're over the clock. Yeah. I appreciate you guys uh, joining us. Did you, I'm going to start with Fukon. you have any last thoughts? Uh, last thoughts. What I would say for last thoughts is really, if you're watching this, the theme of this show was takeaways from the last event was anti-fragile. Really is what you go through and make you become who you eventually want to be or strive to be. And I always say growth starts within uh, your business can't grow unless you grow. Right. It will only grow to the extent that you do. So realize that there are 
shortcomings, there are going to be trials, but they're only going to make you stronger. And then eventually you'll become anti-fragile. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Excellent. Uh, Cheryl, what about you? Um, one of the things that I heard that resonated with me is always be in service. Mm -hmm. So what, whatever you're doing, always be in service. And once you do that, how can you not be anti-fragile? Right, right. Well it's a no said. brainer. Well said. Go ahead. Yeah, I would say things we have, the main thing we haven't covered or what I would say is, is worry about the things that you can control. You know, there's a lot of things going on in this world right now in politics and, and you know, what happened this morning with Russia and Ukraine. We can't control that. Right. There's just there, and there's no sense sitting there dwelling on it. You know, we, we've got to we've got to figure out what you know, what we can what we can control and what we can make a difference in and things in our world and and not worry about the the, the stuff that's going to happen it's going to happen right you just can't you just can't dwell on it right excellent well said. so um <clears throat> for time i'm just going to say that folks if you are wanting to invest passively in real estate both glenn and buquan's um, contact information is right over there in the um on the right hand side in the in the show notes and will be in the show notes and cheryl's uh, information is there as well. If you guys have any kind of uh, merchant services, credit card services that uh, you might want her to take a look at. She's the bomb. She will save you money. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, guys, thanks again for joining us on the show. Yeah, um, I, I always love coming back and recapping this stuff because it helps me sort of remember, even though I keep notes. Um, I, I always like to hear from others on what their take is too, because you know, sometimes our takes are a little bit different than others. That's why we're in this group. Yeah. So we can continue to bounce yeah. stuff off of one another. And lift each other up. That's right. Awesome. So audience, this is for you now. I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on the Real Estate Investor Show. Hard money for real estate investors. We are Carolina Capital Management and we are lenders in the Southeast for real estate investors. If you are interested in borrowing money, go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the apply now tab. If you're a passive investor looking for passive returns, click on the investor uh, accredited investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell and sign up with Wednesdays with Wendy. We will see you guys next week. Ta-ta.